Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Starlosa, and let's talk about competitive. Let's talk about how you guys have been finding competitive. But before we go into this, I just want to read off some rather ridiculous stats. Now, let me just give you a bit of backstory to this. I, um, I, I really enjoy bikes. I enjoy road cycling. I enjoy mountain biking. Well, recently I bought this thing called a Vivo Active HR. It monitors my heart rate. Um, it's like a, a kind of like a smartwatch style thing. It's got GPS tracking in it and whatever. It kind of helps me um, track my rides and where I'm going and all that and compare stats with other people who are doing the same sort of thing. But anyway, it, it monitors my heart rate. Now, my average resting heart rate is around 45 to uh, just under, I guess, 50 um, beats per minute, which is actually pretty low. I think it's because I'm, I think I'm, I'm fairly fit because of all the bike riding I do. I mean, hell, this week I've done like nearly 70 miles of bike riding already, which is a bit crazy. But it's, it's just a thing that I like to do on the side, and you know, it, it keeps me, it gets me out, I suppose. But <laughs> yesterday, um, we did a massive, massive batch of. Um, ranked games and my statistics are extremely interesting to read because if I just told you that my average rest in heartbeat was like 45 to 51 on average um, well yesterday my average rest in heartbeat was 67 and uh, my max was 155 and you can clearly see that from the morning when it gets to the time when we started playing ranked so around about uh, I think it was around about 6 p.m. it absolutely spikes and there are massive spikes I mean at one point it went up to 155 beats per minute, so that tells you how intensive Overwatch competitive really is. And it was like really intensive for me anyway. So what I want to talk about is my experience with this so far. So I have been playing in a complete team. That means I've got five other people all in voice communication and we're all working together. Now this makes the game amazing, as I expected it would do. Because once you start working together, once you start finding roles for each other, it becomes such a fantastic game. Now I know the issue with this is there are a lot of people out there who are not playing in full six-man stacks, and the problem with that is you. I think it it, it promotes toxicity, so I'm, I'm kind of expecting a lot of tales of woe in the comments below because I did play some solo queue back when competitive was on the PTR, and it was a mixed bag. I think like I, I had some really good games. I had to, in fact I put a game on the channel I believe uh, on Volskaya Industries where there were people using the microphone. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward because we don't know who these people are, but at least there was some communication. Some of the team were actually using their mics, which you should always use your mic or be prepared to use a microphone if you are going into ranked, if you've got one available. I mean, if you don't have a mic, you can use the um, command wheel to sort of give uh, various quick instructions. You can also type in the chat, but communication is key. So there were some games where I had communication, but then there were other games where it just felt as if we were playing quick play. Now there is a distinction to be made right now. Quick play now is, I, I don't want to say a pointless game mode, but it is a very relaxing game mode. Competitive, if you've watched my uh, earlier video on the competitive attitude, is where you go to be intensive. This is where you go to actually win. You go to try your absolute best. You do not turn up to think, um, ah, hey, you know what, I'm just going to try this. I'm going to try Hanzo. I haven't played Hanzo for a week, but I'm just going to play him. You don't do that. You play what you're best at playing, and you also try and communicate with, you with your team. But you have to be flexible. Because think about what I've just said. You play what you're best at playing. Now, I'm good with Soldier. I'm good with Zarya. I'm good with Lucio. I'm okay with Reaper. Those are the characters that I've been playing in a six-man team where we all know who we are strong with, okay? Now, when you're playing in a solo queue, you don't know this, so you have to be a little bit more flexible. What happens if those heroes have all been selected? What happens if you're left with, um, like, uh, a slot that you're not particularly uh, comfortable with, but you still have to try and fill it for the good of the team? This is where I think a lot of the um, tales of woe are going to come from. As I said, I, I think I ex I'm, I'm almost expecting there to be quite a lot, and, and it's making me a little bit disheartened, really, because... I've had such an awesome experience with the competitive, and it's just going to continue for me. And I will keep making videos on the channel showing you guys what's going on. I mean, we played a load of games yesterday. My current record in, in uh, competitive is 11 wins and 2 losses, which is actually pretty good. I think it's like an 87% or something win rate. Um, it, it, is, it is pretty good. We're doing really well as a team. I am sort of hesitant as to jumping into ranked on my own. Like, I don't think I would. Like, right now, if I'm being honest with you guys, just think, oh, I'm going to play a game of Overwatch. I'm just going to jump into a competitive game. I don't think I'd do that. I'd jump into quick play. And I'd still have a good time. You know, you're still going to get account level. You're still going to pick up loot boxes. You're going to get all of that. It's going to add to your uh, standard statistics. But competitive is a completely different ball game. I mean, when I look at my competitive stats, although they're only fresh, 
Uh, in fact, let me just bring them up a second, guys. It's a highly professional video. Let me just bring them up in the video. <laughs> um, but when I look at my competitive stats... Um, so if I compare my quick play stats, which I've got a 53% win rate. I've got 255 wins and 220 losses. Um, I've got, you know, fairly decent rankings on Soldier, Zarya, McCree, Lucio, Widowmaker, Reinhardt, Junkrat... Uh, it, it's sort of it's just all over the place because I've been playing a ton of different heroes and that's fine because it's quick play that's where you go to learn the heroes if I then look at competitive and by the way I'm looking at these stats on overbuff.com I'll actually put a link to my uh, profile in the description if you guys want to check that out but then when I go to the actual rank statistics and I start looking at this suddenly it's an 84% win rate and um, when you look at my uh, statistics for the characters I've been playing like, a lot of them, I'm like, I'm really high up. I'm in the 99th percentile for a lot of the uh, characters, like, you know, damage done with uh, Soldier, the healing done with Soldier, the um, eliminations with Soldier and Zarya, the damage with Zarya. So it's a very, very strong performance. And that's really good because I've gone into those games absolutely wanting to try the best. I mean, I've played Soldier, Zarya, Lucio, Reaper, and Winston, and that is it. Those are the only characters I've played in competitive. Those are the characters which I am very comfortable with. Like, Soldier, I, I'm... Soldier's... Junkrat's my favourite character, if you really were to ask me what was my favourite character, but Soldier is the one that I, I, I enjoy playing the most, probably. It's very closely followed by Zarya. Um, those are the characters I know, if I drop onto them, I will I will really, really benefit the team and I'll do really well. I can almost say, like, right now, I will perform well if I play on those characters. If I play somebody different, like if you put me on a Widowmaker, mm, I'll be okay, but I'm out of practice. Same with, like, a Hanzo or even a Junkrat or something like that, I, mm, I'm out of practice. Those characters that I've just listed, though, yeah, I can I can play really strong with them. But what I want to know, guys, I want to know what your experience has been with this so far. We know there's been a couple of issues. There was the issue with the control point maps not giving you enough XP. That has since been changed and fixed so that they actually do give you the same amount of um, XP or they will take the XP away if you win or lose because you, you got... Um, like a really small amount for winning the control point map, which is a bit stupid because they took so long, but it was a bug, and they fixed that, so that's not really an issue anymore. Um, obviously, we don't really like sudden death. That's not the greatest thing ever, but that is being changed come next um, season, so yeah, that, that's kind of okay, which actually, the game... Uh, we lost. Um, I lost the very first competitive game I played, and then the second loss was on sudden death. It was on Numbani. I think we had two minutes to attack the first point on Numbani. We almost did it. It was pretty close, but... I know it's fairly difficult to break down that point, um, especially if they've got a, a pretty solid defense setup. But yeah, guys, let me know how you have been experiencing the competitive right now. I think it's available on PC and Xbox One at the moment. I don't think it's out on uh, PlayStation, not yet, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I want to, like, don't hold back either, guys, because we need to talk as a community and put forward our, our different experiences. As I say, my experience have been with a full team and I will be uploading those videos to the channel because I think they make for good content and I also want you guys to see how the game can be played when you play as a team that is functioning correctly together and not as just um, you know a couple of random guys where it can break down because I, I know I know I know it can break down guys I know you you might get a guy who maybe treats competitive as if it's quick play and on all of that and it can be frustrating also, the other thing as well, we'll just quickly touch on this, is we're not too sure how it assigns the skill rating. My skill rating, I think it gave me, was 52 after the competitive games. Yet, people in the same team as me were getting, like, 55 and stuff like that. Not really sure how that was working out, considering how quite strong my statistics were. I mean, they were really strong. Like, I think I had, like, 480-something eliminations and 60 deaths. And, like, average damage was 15,000 across all... This was across all of the characters that I was playing. So it was pretty strong. It was a bit weird, but um, I don't think it's too much of an issue because as you keep playing together as a team, you just it will begin to level up. So we're not too sure how it does attribute the skill rating to begin with. But uh, yeah, all right, guys. So let me know what your skill rating is below. Um, let me know how your competitive games have gone and let me know how you're actually feeling competitive right now. I mean, for me, it's been one hell of an experience and I cannot, like, I literally cannot wait to play more competitive. It's like all I want to do is play competitive all the time now, especially when it's in a team. It is such a good experience. It, like, you feel as if you're putting stuff on the line. You, you really need to try. When you lose, it, yeah, it's, it's a bitter blow, but you have to think, why did we lose? What happened? How can we get better in the next game? And for me, that it's just, it's awesome. Like, I really like being competitive, and it, it's just great. All right, guys, I'm Stalo, so this is Unit Lost. If you do enjoy the channel and enjoy the videos, then like this video. Subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter as well, guys. And do send me screenshots of your statistics or whatever you want to do on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. And I'll catch you next time, guys. Toodaloo.